Hello, in this video I'm going to go over a OCR A-level a question from the mechanics part of one of the papers, where it's actually a practice question, but it's written by the OCRA examiners, so it would be definitely suitable for that specification, but probably for other A-level specifications too. Um, the thing, the thing, key information that we're given is it's uniform, somewhere it's told we're told that this uh, rod that's resting on this drum here is uniform which means they are uniform the plank is modeled as a uniform rod so we can put the center of mass in the middle so that's three that's three meters this is three meters and we're told the weight of the rod is, well we're told the mass is 10 so the weight is 10 g um we're told the angle actually we i'm just going to mark it as feet rather than actually work out the angle and using a kind of pythagoras or whatever whichever way uh we choose to do these things if we have 10 feet is 5 over 12 it's easy to use either by constructing a triangle or whatever to see that sine theta would be 5 over 13 and cos theta would be 12 over 13, just doing a bit of tri trigonometry and Pythag, or just simply putting in the calculator. But these are the exact we want to work with. We don't want to be dealing with anything nasty and working at the angle and working out horrible decimals. We need to work with exact values, exact ratios. Um, let's mark in a few more angles of these. Let's say I'm going to just mark in the angle theta. Yes, we know what theta is, but doesn't do it's not in it's not really particularly beneficial to mark that on the diagram just mark theta there and theta there if we need it right okay so let's label these this is our normal contact force between the rod and the ground this is our frictional force. It does say later on it's in limiting equilibrium, so that's going to be equal to mu r, but let's just put it as f there for now. Uh, we've got another contact force here, normal contact force there, and that's s. And so that's it. We're ready to, we're ready to go, really. So a good diagram is always essential with these things. Right, so the first bit is to find the, basically it wants us to work out s. Um, it's always a good idea to see if that can come out with one simple equation and if it does it's almost certainly going to be a moments equation that's likely to be a moments equation well if we take moments about a those two forces the r and the f are not going to be in the equation so we'll just have the 10g and we'll have the 5s in one equation so we'll get s pretty readily from that so that's what we're going to do moments about a Right, now the S force there is going, that's going anti-clockwise. Whereas this one here is going clockwise around this as our centre. Okay, so that means we can set up our equation. Let's do the S first. Now the distance, the perpendicular distance here is just 6. So that will be S times 6 is our anticlockwise moment. And the perpendicular distance to the, oh my G seems to disappear there, to my G is there. And using looking at the right angle triangle here, that is three cos theta some people prefer to actually that's one way of getting the distance another way of taking the moment is to look at the component of the 10g 10g cos theta and times in that by three either way you get it uh, you get the um the same end result but i'm going to go with times in the 10g by the three cos theta so 10g 3 cos theta and that equals to 0 
So we have S is equal to 5G cos theta when we do a bit of rearranging. And we know that cos theta is 12 over 13. So that gives us S is equal to 5G times 12 over 13. Which is equal to 60G over 13. Okay. And we can work that out to two or three significant figures if you want to. But normally answers in terms of G are acceptable. Okay, so then the next bit is about limiting equilibrium. And so we can use the relation that limiting equilibrium gives us F equals to mu R. So we need to get F and R, really. So to do, and it's quite common that in these questions, we're going to have a resolving equation um, horizontally and vertically. Well, the component of the S horizontally, that component there, is S sine theta, because that's the way the triangle would go. Our angle theta is marked away from it like that. So that's S sine theta must be equal to f. They, those two must balance each other out. So we already know what f is. So f is equal to, because we know that s is 60g over 13, and sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. And so that comes to 300g over 169. Okay, so that's my horizontal equation. Then I can do the same vertically. But now the component that I'm of interest for S is my adjacent component there, which is S cos theta. And they are going to be counteracted by the two vertical components. So we have upwards R plus s cos theta, take away 10g equals to 0. So we have r equals to 10g minus s cos theta. Now s is 60g over 13. And cos theta, as we've already seen, is equal to 12 over 13. And that all comes to, when we do all that, 60 times 12 is 1,720, 169, 690, minus uh, 1,690. So that comes to 970 G over 169. So we've got R and we've got F. This is F. And this is R here. So we can go back to what I was saying. Limit in equilibrium. F equals mu R. So that gives me mu equals to F over R. So that's 300 over 169 G. 300 over 169g over 970 over 169g and that all cancels down of course to 30 over 97 because g cancels and there's a factor of 10 uh, in the 300 over 970 cancels to 30 over 97 so another not particularly easy, but not that difficult question. Fair, relatively standard. We've done a moments equation and we've resolved vertically and horizontally over the course of the complete question, which is quite common. Okay, hope you found the video useful. Goodbye.